Well, I'm putting that one in the best spot I can on this field. There's a pond. Oh, 150 yards at most that way. Uh, there's a pond, probably about 300, 400 yards that way at the most. And this is on the west side of this field. The best I could get as far as light is concerned. I didn't want to go too far that way because I'm going to put a swarm trap over through there. Uh, bait hive, excuse me. Those have frames in it, so they're easily removed. And I'm facing southeast. So in the morning, should get some, some light coming through pretty easily. So this is the kind of stuff that makes me smile right here. All the beautiful little wildflowers, the different kind of turnips, uh, feed turnips shoot mouse and pear tree and there's another pear tree over there and I'm going to put a swarm trap in that tree and it's going to be on the west side of this field and we're going to face southeast south southeast I see a bumblebee over there and uh, plenty of plenty of activity out here the bumblebees are foraging it I don't see any honeybees yet I keep calling those things swarm traps, they're actually bait hives, because they have they have five frames in it and they're deep enough to make a 40 liter, 40 liter body, which seems to be the magic number according to a research project done by I think it was Cornell University a couple of years ago, many years ago actually. They tried out 20 liter, 40 liter, and 80 liter, and they had the most hits on the 40 liter volume. Always love watching bumblebees. You can get you a pebble. If they get too close, throw the pebble, they'll follow the pebble. They like to catch each other. And haul them off they don't want the competition there's definitely bumblebees here so it's definitely stuff to forage that's just beautiful all right back to the trees all right so I got the hive bait hive hung in the tree now I gotta resist the temptation to call them swarm traps they're not swarm traps they're bait hives because they actually have frames so nice little entrance in the front with the mail to keep the birds out. And we've got a couple holes with screen over it and a number eight hardware cloth. We'll get us some ventilation. Today is a good day for ventilation. And it's hanging pretty much straight up and down because I'm doing foundationless and that comes becomes more important because you want your frames perfectly up and down. When you're going foundationless, but I'm reusing frames that had wax on them from previous uh, previous hives, so different cutouts I'd done, and uh, so we're we're in good shape. Uh, moving on to the next one. And yeah, coming to check on this one over the creek. I see zero activity here. Give them time. It's still early. It's not even April yet. It's late March. But fresh water. And from the creek going through this culvert. And I, I did catch one here last year in a swarm trap. Uh, the swarm trap pots. But uh, put a bait hive here this year. We'll see how it goes. bit of advice when hanging bait hives in trees take your time don't get in a hurry 
when you're doing this by yourself, it might help to have a longer ladder than you actually need. And uh, when I come back to remove them, I'll be using a 24-foot ladder, one of those extension, extendable ones, instead of an 8-foot or 7-foot uh, A-frame ladder. It's a challenge to put it up there like that, but uh, I'm hoping the benefit will outweigh the challenge. Lord willing, bless these bait hives and may they be bountiful. So that one's in a tree facing east. A little bit towards the south, I think. But, you know, we got water there. Nice little pond. Plenty of uh, lily pads out there for the bees to land on and get them some water come back here. Raise babies with water. One cell of honey, one cell of pollen, one cell of water. Equals a baby bee grown up. Happy bee hunting, y'all. These sweet girls go into town. They're good size, goodness gracious. You go, girl. Get you some pollen, some nectar. Get this white clover, Dutch clover. There's my swarm trap bait hive I just put up. Got plenty of Dutch clover out here. A little bit of crimson, but I'm going to ease over to the side and get out of it. And my final bait hive of this day, Saturday, March 25th, goes next to a colony of bees in my soffit. So, I keep saying I'm gonna get these out of here, but I'm going to this year for sure. I got one out of the neighbor's house there last year, so now I can get this one out. They, and they are located here to here, somewhere in there. They go in there, by midsummer they'll be big old ball of bees on the outside right there. Now, last year they decided they were going to swarm into here. All kinds of entrances. You can see where I've been plugging holes with that air conditioning. The blue up there. That's air conditioning filter. And there and there. So, I've got a couple of concrete screws holding this up and bungee cord and it kind of put a screw through some poly belt and then just put a screw through it, loop it over and then pin it down so it had a good place to latch on to. The top one's actually just kind of hanging on a screw um, so that'll work just fine. but. This one's pretty well protected, and I've been seeing bees. I don't know if they're confused. Maybe that's their first time out foraging. But the uh, last couple of weekends, there's been bees going to this window trying to get in. So I'm tempted to think that they're actually trying to get in because I know there's wax in this area. Because that bathroom, um, that's a bathroom in there. But there's a mirror from like here to here. So there's a mirror in that location on the inside. And it's one of those old style inset medicine cabinets. And there were bee parts of dead bees that kept falling down inside on top of the sink. So I know from my guess is that there's wax in here. And if I had to take a wild guess... There's wax from there all the way down here that needs to be cleaned out. So I'm going to open up starting here and you can see the ventilation panel right there. You could hear the bees loud and clear uh, last summer through that panel as they were fanning in the middle of the day because it was too warm. 
So I'm, I'm going <clears> to <throat> open that up and get them out. But it ain't going to happen today. And this warm trap will be able to hedge against them swarming out and trying to move back into this soffit down here. So hopefully they'll just go into this warm trap instead if they do decide to swarm. And I've also got a swarm trap in this camellia. And it actually caught one last year. Of course, it was wedged in over here, but you know, same tree. And I lost a swarm that was hiding in that camellia last year. And it took off that way and just kept going. Never stopped. So I was hoping that they would land, you know, a couple of trees back, but they didn't. That's what happens. It's March 25th, swarm season's about to kick in. As by all the pollen you can see going in and out today, they are raising babies like crazy, which is good. That means they got a strong queen in there, and uh, I'm looking forward to getting her out and putting her in a proper hive body. Happy bee hunting. Y'all have a great summer, spring, and fall, and so on.